God forbid if I do not put a disclaimer. I know there's a bundle of Fatal Frame 2 fans that absolutely love Mayu and they think she's perfect and they're and she's there she's y'all's little waifu. But please watch this video from beginning to end before posting a comment if you think this is a hate video on that character. This video is not dedicated to hating on Mayu. Okay? I do not hate Mayu. She's a good character. I'm just pointing out some things, which is an extra mind fuck for people who have played the game and they really haven't paid attention. So again, this isn't a hate video for Mayu Amakura. Mayu Amakura is not a good person. I know I might get some hate from Fatal Framers over this because I'm picking on their innocent little waifu, but please watch the entire video before I leave it a comment. So if anyone doesn't know anything about Fatal Frame 2 Crimson Butterfly, the story surrounds twin sisters who get trapped in a village that disappeared on the night of a failed ritual. The main character, Miyu, wanted to keep her promise to always be by Mayu's side, goes to the village to catch up with her sister, who is wandering off a lot. As you play through the game after reuniting with Mayu, and you listen to her dialogue and witness her behavior, it is very obvious that Mayu is being influenced by spirits. If you read her character bio, which is in the little booklet of the Fatal Frame 2 um, PS2 game, it is said that Mayu is very sensitive to the paranormal and has little resistance to it, so ghosts are using her as a median. Now, that could explain some things right there, but I'm just getting started. And for anyone wondering, yes, she is an escort character, by the way. Now to go a little into Mayu's character. She's very attached to her twin sister, Miyu. After Mayu had her accident that left her leg crippled, Miyu has always promised to stay by her side, but Mayu's desire to have her sister close seems sort of obsessive. Throughout the game, while she's with you, if you get some distance between Miyu and Mayu, she will call out for Miyu to slow down and wait for her. It's understandable with her blacking out while she's possessed and waking up in locations without Miyu, it would make sense that she's scared and she doesn't want to be alone, in a village full of vengeful spirits who are mistaking them for the previous twins, the Iron Side Kurosawa, and pressuring them to go through the Crimson Sacrifice ritual. Which is where one sister kills the other, because they believe that twins were a single soul split into two at birth. And for anyone watching this who thinks I'm forgetting about a certain white Komodo, half-bloody, splat, that looks like a half a butterfly wing, no, I am not forgetting about the main antagonist of the game. I will go into her. I am mostly focusing on Mayu as a character by herself. But if you pay attention to the flashback, it's not just her being in a scary village that makes her want to cling to Miyu. It seems she's had this separation anxiety ever since she was a child. Hence why I'm going to bring up, up later. Alright, so yeah, despite that, it seems like she absolutely cannot stand being alone without Miyu. Even if it's for a short time, like a few seconds, a few minutes, or god forbid an hour. It seems like even the thought of being alone will bring her into despair and she will beg and plea for Miyu to keep her promise and to not leave her alone. Even if it means, you know, Miyu going off to find the key and freeing her from herself. Now just a very little thing about Sai. Sai Kurosawa, who's not their blood ancestor, people can stop saying that now. Sai is the girl in the white kimono and she is the final boss of Fatal Frame 2 on the Nightmare difficulty. And maybe hard too, but I'm pretty sure it's a nightmare. Sai, just like Mayu, had an obsession to be close with her twin sister, hence why she desired to go through the Crimson Sacrifice despite Ma Yai wanting the opposite. And through this game, she is trying to urge Miyu to go through the ritual and kill her so they can become one because she is mistaking Miyu as Yai. And even though she is controlling Mayu, I do not believe Mayu's desire to participate in the ritual is 100% Sai's influence, and I'm about to get into that. But I do have some dialogue to show how obsessed... Sai was with her sister, and this was from her boss fight. I was happy when you said, let's escape together. I would have been just as happy to have you kill me. I didn't come back. I was killed by the priests, and only me. The repentance began. I kept waiting for your hands to close around my fortune. I thought about you killing me, you, ever since we were kids. Now, you probably heard Mayu talking during that little segment as well. That audio I took from the boss fight of Sai, I cut out her bits of the audio and put it together so you know what she's saying as a phrase as a whole. I was going to do the same for Mayu, but 
I'm only gonna play a segment of it and then read her entire paragraph. So, um, I know some people who want to keep Mayu pure, they're gonna try and go cut in and be like, Oh no, 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 that's from the boss fight that leads to the alternate ending, so whatever Mayu says doesn't count. Well, it does make my point valid when you can hear both audio tracks during the background when the um, priests are banging their staffs in the canon ending. And on my sixth, seventh time playing this game, I heard Mayu say something that really caught my attention. I'm sorry, sweetie. Can you please repeat that? Yes, you heard that correctly. Mayu fell off that cliff on purpose when they were playing in the woods as children. You know the phrase, history repeats itself? Well, people will still deny this. Sai also fell off the cliff on purpose. Like I said with, with her wanting to go through the ritual, Sai w really wanted Yai to kill her. That's why she threw herself off that cliff in hopes that Yai would slow down for her and they would be forced to do the ritual. But Mayu... That was her way of having Miyu be her, so she can always emotionally manipulate her. Here's the rest of her dialogue read by me. I wanted to be with you always. You know, Miyu, on that day, I fell off the cliff on purpose. I was so afraid you would leave me alone, go off far away. The pain I felt tore at me then, but I was glad. I knew that I made you mine, and only mine. Miyu will always be with me. She'll always worry about me, and only me. She'll always think about me, and she'll do whatever I say. You always worried about me after that. I was so overjoyed every time I felt my leg ache. You'll never leave me behind, right? We'll always be together. Let's move on. Together. Deeper. 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 Both Sai and Mayu desired to be with their sister forever. But they both knew that they couldn't be together forever. That they would have to live and die separately from their twin. Here is why I think Mayu wasn't completely under Sai's control in the canon ending. I mean, think about it. Mayu risked injuring herself just because she thought Miyu was going to leave her behind when they were playing in the woods. So I guess seeing that how Miyu always blamed herself and always felt guilty because of her injury, she probably used that to her advantage to keep her sister in lock. That's what she meant by... I knew that I had made you mine. Like if Miyu was to walk too far of a distance for Mayu's comfort, she would bring up that her leg was hurting her and Miyu would come running. She would guilt trip Miyu into staying by her side, emotionally manipulating her sister to get what she wants. And knowing that Miyu would do whatever she says, she encouraged her to go through the Crimson Sacrifice ritual and kill her so they could become one and truly be together forever. And of course, the guilt-ridden Miyu went along with it and strangled Mayu to death. People have said that it was Yai that was possessing Miyu to strangle Mayu so the Crimson Sacrifice between the Kurosawa twins would be successful, but no. Yai was not in the village when the repentance happened. Yai married Makanta Ryozo, and she was the hanging woman from Fatal Frame 1. So with the ritual being a success, a butterfly forms on Mayu's throat, assuming to be Sai, because two butterflies appear. The mourners make their way through the Veiled Priest, pick up Mayu's corpse, and they throw her into the hellish abyss. And Mayu, standing there in shock over what just happened, she just realized she just killed her sister, and then a butterfly rises from the hellish abyss, which this one is Mayu, and she tells Miyu, thank you. So Mayu gets her way, and Miyu is stricken with grief over what happened. In the nightmare ending, despite Itsuki's warning, while she was holding on to Mayu about to pull her from the pit, she looked into the abyss and she became permanently blinded. And we can see that Mayu is actually quite pleased that Miyu now relies on her. In Fatal Frame 3, Miyu is still affected by the guilt of killing Mayu, which caused her to fall into a deep depression, resulting in her getting afflicted by the tattooed curse, trapping her in the dream of Manor of Sleep. I'm not gonna go into full detail of the tattooed curse. That's an entire can of worms, and that's a video on its own. In Fatal Frame 3, The Tormented, sadly the last Fatal Frame game we ever got in the United States. I don't not count Fatal Frame 5 digital release, because that's bullshit. Okay, so in Fatal Frame 3, you play as their uncle, K. Amakura, who's trying to save Miyu and wake her up from her dream before she becomes trapped. The entire time, you hear her telling Mayu that how sorry she is, she's going to keep her promise and go there with her so they can be together forever like she promised. And she disappears behind locked doors in the ceremony room. 
That's the last you see of her. It's safe to assume in the original ending, she does become trapped in the manner of sleep and she dies. But the alternate ending of Fatal Frame 3 is said to be canon, so she does wake up and she gets introduced to Rei and Miku. What'd you think of my Miyu cosplay? That's the best I can do for this little thing. Anyway, for people who are wondering why I think Mayu isn't a good person, like, I know some of you probably adored her for so long, it's hard for some of you Mayu waifu lovers to say anything negative about this character, but, um... It's her selfishness to have Miyu strictly belong to her. To have Miyu never leave her side, no matter what the cause, like crippling her leg or forcing her to kill her. Because, well, I guess when she was being controlled by Sai, she learned more about the Crimson Sacrifice and she liked the idea of becoming one with Miyu so they can truly be together until Miyu dies. And hopefully people who are pro Mayu made it this far to the video so I can explain my disclaimer. No, I do not hate Mayu Amakura as a character. Learning this truth about Mayu did not ruin the character or the game for me. In fact, this added what the fuck factor made the game even more amazing. I mean, these games aren't supposed to have a happy ending. Well, I guess Fatal Frame 3 kind of did because alternate ending is considered canon and everyone survives, but yeah. These games are supposed to be horror games. They're not supposed to have this, you know, typical love story or happy ending, whatever you see in fucking modern horror films where, uh, you know, the survivors, they hook up, they survive, they live another day, blah, 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 blah. But yeah, uh, learning that about Mayu, that threw me for a loop. My mind was completely and thoroughly blown, and I love this game. Well, Fatal Frame 3 will always be my number one, but Fatal Frame 2 is my second favorite. Okay, so people who might be angry over this video because I'm hating on their waifu... This isn't a video dedicated to be a hate video towards this character. I still like this character. Like I mentioned, the added what the fuck factor is that, that this sweet, innocent, scared, possessed girl is actually more devious and fucked up in the head made the game a lot more fun for me. Okay, so this about wraps up the video. Um, if you played Fatal Frame 2 and you really didn't notice this about Mayu, did the added what the fuck make you want to go replay the game? Or for people who just stumbled upon this video and you never played Fatal Frame and your mind is blown over it, like what the hell when you're learning about this character, does that inspire you to want to play the game yourself? If so, you should. These games are amazing. That's why I'm spreading the word about these and make as much Fatal Frame related content on my channel as I can. So if you do decide to play these games, go to your PlayStation Network or Xbox Live Store because th physical copies are extremely pricey. I mean, even if they're incomplete. Like, I found a Fatal Frame 2 disc in a CD jewel case online for $300. No, thank you. So yeah, forget about the physical copies. Those are rare. Just go for your digital copies that are on your PlayStation Network or Xbox Live Store. If you want some more Fatal Frame content, whether it's on a specific character, a specific ghost, or curse, or lore above the Fatal Frame games, feel free to go to the comment section and give me some suggestions. I would love to hear some suggestions from my viewers. Anyway, if you like this video, please give it an upvote, follow the channel for more Fatal Frame related content or any geek culture related content I decide to upload. I would most appreciate it if you would also share this video on your social media. Let's blow some more minds, shall we? Anyway, this has been your Miss Enemies Nerd. Thanks for watching.